It's hard to believe that it's already been more than two years since we first met Evans in his incredible 20 foot shipping container home. Today we're back to visit him again and see how it's all going. G'day Evans! G'day mate, how you doing? Good to see you again buddy. Yeah, been a while eh? It certainly has. Two and a half years I think. That's correct. So how is life in your shipping container working out? Uh, pretty neat eh? It's a different spot isn't it? It certainly is. It looks completely different to your last setup. <laughs> yes. Can you tell me a little bit about how you came to be on this property? Uh, yes, well the other boat yard changed their policies and uh, so I had to find somewhere else to move and so from scratch I set up this setup which is brilliant because I can live and work in such a small footprint basically. Now there's a few more containers in the mix this time isn't there? Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about how you've set all this up? Well this one here was the first one I fitted out and I fitted this out in Portugal. Um, it's got a, a self-contained office at one end and it was all full of uh, my boat building equipment previously but yeah basically sort of moved everything here and stacked them all and this is what we got. Brilliant and then you've got another workshop over there as well? Yeah well, you've got to have enough haven't you? You certainly do. I think there's going to be a few people who are quite jealous of all your tools there. You've got a crazy collection. Yeah. Well, boat building is everything, isn't it? You know. And I see the meme king is at it again with this wall. Well, yeah. <laughs> You've got to have a laugh, haven't you? Totally. <laughs> and then your container home, the 20 foot that we saw last time, that's actually on top of this one now, isn't that's it? That's correct, yes. Can you talk to me about how you've stacked them all together to create this epic container home complex? <laughs> well, it's just using the basic twist locks that they use to ship the containers. So on the corners, there's a kind of an oval slot that you put these um, twist locks in and then just lock them. So that's what's holding the two together. It's just conventional container shipping arrangement. So that locks them as one. When we first met you, you were just nearing completion of your container home. You've been living in it for a while now. How are you finding that? Well, everything changed because it's going to be extended to twice its width eventually. And I didn't intend to move in until it was extended. But then six months after the last one, I had a heart attack and damaged my heart permanently, had to stop work. So I moved in as it was. And for two years, I've been living in it as it stands. And, um, you know, even though it's quite small, it's not an unpleasant place. When you walk in, you feel at home. So when you had your heart attack, that must have been a terrible shock. But having the container home in that respect almost acted a little bit like a safety blanket, didn't it? Yes, it's great because I have no debt and I own it. You know, though I have to rent the site, it's my home and it's where I can live. And yes, I mean, without that, your life would be much more difficult. Plus also my workshop facilities, I mean, Regardless, I have to do something. Um, you know, when we get in here, you'll see that I changed my whole policy until I can start working again to an extent. So what have you done in here then? Okay, well, this was all industrial equipment when I had it set up from Portugal, but after the uh, heart attack, I wasn't allowed for a considerable while to work manually. So I bought this, which is a, a laser cutter engraver. And, um, made all this which was going to be if I couldn't work what I'd do for a living uh, as it happens now I can work again so this is a hobby. Oh, fantastic it really goes to show just how versatile these spaces are because you've been able to give this container many different lives haven't you? Indeed yes. Now also in this container you've built a little module where you actually lived for about six months wasn't yep. it? Yep. Can you show me that and how that all works? Yeah that's happened. All right. I love what you've done with the timber here as well. All of these laser etchings into it just look phenomenal, don't they? Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I mean, I, I'd never done this before with the laser. It's just when I built this, I thought I'll see if it works and it worked out really well, eh? But way to take some standard pine and make it really look like something special. <laughs> it's different, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. This is truly compact, isn't it? About as small as you can get that you can use. 
How big is this? It's a quarter of the area of the container, so it's a bit over two metres this way and about uh, 1,300 millimetres that way, I think, something of that nature. And you lived in this for six months? Yes, I did. As a bedroom and, a, and an office, obviously. I ate and such like elsewhere. But yes, it has air conditioning, a fridge, a microwave and surround sound and the lights dim, which you couldn't live in without being able to dim. And yeah, that's it. What was it actually like living in a space this size? Well, I guess uh, coming from boats. I mean, if a crewman in a super yacht got this as a cabin, they'd just think they'd gone to heaven, you know? They, they, usually they share and they don't have anywhere this big or this well set up. You know, I found it quite comfortable. I mean, I chose to live here, I didn't have to. Well, I'm really excited to see how your home upstairs is looking. Can we check that out? Let's do it. All right. And this is a lovely little walkway up to your home. Yes, I've got my own private little bushwalk. It's just magic, isn't it? It certainly is. Now this is all something that you've done, isn't it? Yes, yes. Basically some wood chips and a few bits of the stick from around the place, but it works really well. Oh, and then look at your balcony here. That is just perfect, isn't it? Yeah, magic spot, this one. It really is. So the first time I visited you from this balcony, you had views out over the marina, and now you've got views over your own private little bit of bush. My little bushwalk, yeah. So this is the magic spot to sit and just chill. <laughs> to not complain about that for versatility, can you? No, you can't. And I really like the way that you've finished it as well, because you've got the roof over it now, and you've got these really nice supports, and it's yeah. all looking very in place, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a great feel to it, yeah. And all of it still is just unbolt a couple of bolts and take it and ship it. None of it is fixed, so you can't just take it away. You must get a few uh, laughs at the name of your place as well, calling it Farts Haven. Well, yes, and the, the stairway to Haven. The stairway to Haven <laughs> <laughs> certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I cannot wait to see how the interior is transformed. No worries. Oh, wow. Now this table is new. Yes. That is beautiful. Look at how you've set the fossils into it. Because, of course, you were a furniture maker in a past life, weren't you? Indeed, Rosie and I were, yes. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> and you can definitely see how much of that skill is just applied to all of the timber craft in here because it really is quite beautiful the way that you've done all the cabinetry and the layout of this place. Yeah, it's, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating here. I'm happy to come home. I mean, if it was a caravan, I would hate it, but I can come here and I feel at home. And that to me is the proof that the concept worked. So what modifications have you made to the home since I was here last? Uh, other than, remember, there used to be a coffee table here. Uh, this is only here really to protect it. It's too big for this area. When I extend the home, it will be there, but I didn't want it to get damaged. So there's this and the chairs, which I made at the same time. And uh, here I put in the, the little uh, cabinet for my um, spices, etc. And uh, this, which is my extraction. So with the extractor, because I know that you're philosophy with building shipping containers is not to put any penetrations in the containers themselves so that they can still be shippable. Except the floor. Except the floor. Yes. So how did you deal with the extraction? Uh, this whole back section is uh, activated uh, charcoal. So it extracts through that, which is commonplace for extraction, either blow outside or they blow through a filter. And so how is the kitchen space working out for you? Are you finding it quite nice to cook in here? Well, the way it was set up in the original video is the way it will be. It's a triangle of cooking, but there isn't room to do it here. It's still perfectly comfortable like this, but when I extend, then it will be back the way it was. So basically I don't need an oven. I use a microwave, my fridge, which fridge freezer, a gas cooker, and I've got two water systems here. I've got a pressurized system that runs my shower, etc. But I've got a gravity-fed drinking water system. All of my water is uh, is filtered through these four filters here and sterilized through a UV system there. So this system, any reasonable source of fresh water, whether it be tank water, whether it be a well, or whether it be mains supply, is completely filtered and sterilized before it goes into my water tank. So I have a stainless steel water tank there that gravity feeds for my drinking water and then a big blue plastic drum that's pressure fed that uh, runs my shower, etc., washing machine and all that. And uh, you know, this, this works quite well. It's actually, what I, what I did is I duplicated what I saw in Italy where they drain onto the draining board. So you don't have to dry everything. You can put it in there after it's rinsed and it just drains. 
And when I set up the laser and thought that I was going to have to sit in an office and, and make a living, I researched how to monogram uh, crockery and then uh, did all my personal crockery with this, uh, with the customised to this. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and so how are you finding your bed and lounge area? Hey, it works brilliantly for me. I mean, obviously if there's two people here, it would be crowded, but for one person, I don't feel restrained here. When I come here, I feel at home. I don't feel, oh, I don't want to be here. It's like, great, I'm home. Especially being elevated here in this location, it has definitely improved the view and the outlook from the containers, hasn't it? Well, yeah, I, I particularly like being into the bush. And that's what I hope to set up when I set up permanently, is that I'm back into the bush and that um, my veranda and my, my view, when you open up to the veranda, there's, there's a fluidity between the interior and the exterior. I don't want a little box that's where the people live. I want to be part of the environment. So speaking of the veranda, can we go out and see what you've done out there? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, now this is cool. Who would have thought that stacking shipping containers and building a little bit of a platform off it could give you all this, eh? Yeah, it's neat. So what is the plan now for extending it? Uh, here I won't, but ultimately when I set up, you know, in the bush permanently, then it will be this much wider, plus roofed with a veranda and an outdoor, uh, an outdoor entertainment area. So since I first met you, you've been doing a lot of work on developing affordable shipping container home concepts. Can you tell me about that? Yes, I've actually made a little booklet that shows how this can be extended ultimately to a three bedroom home in stages and also to make an affordable home that uses a 20 foot shipping container that's got doors at either end. And I believe that I can make an affordable home for less than the cost of a, of a caravan, a 20 foot caravan. So to get your home to this level that you have it here now, what would you say you have in it financially? Uh, I estimate 45,000 or less for the home. Less would have been what it cost for the one underneath, but I did that in Portugal, so the cost was in euros. But I've never borrowed money, so I don't owe any money on my home. With the affordable home, it has to cost less than a 20-foot caravan, which I hope will be considerably less. And what is it that made you so passionate about that personally? Why do you really want to build these homes? Because it needs to be done. I mean, it's a, it's a worldwide problem, and a lot of these people, they've worked all their life and they can't afford the rent anymore, they had a bad divorce, they're just unlucky. You know, they've done the right thing all their lives, and particularly thinking of pensioners. They deserve to have somewhere reasonable to live. Yeah. I could not agree with you more. I think your home is absolutely beautiful, and I cannot wait to see what you do in the future with your new affordable housing models. Thank you so much for letting me back into your home. <laughs> no worries. I have always been really impressed with the level of craftsmanship that Evans puts into all of his work. But what he's accomplished here with his container home is so much more than that. It's affordable, it's beautiful, it's simple, and it really goes to show how versatile shipping containers can be as homes, as offices, as workshops, and then even stacked on top of one another to create something like this.